Folks, welcome back here. We're on to episode three of this uh, tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to cover the basics of nobility and military. Some of the more interesting aspects of Dwarf Fortress come from both of those things. I'm just going to continue to construct our little um, bee empire there. Now, we haven't done anything since the last episode. I've literally just uh, continued on from it. So. We might not be able to build, we might build a wooden roof on that structure. It's kind of wasteful given how little wood we have though, so we might hold off on that. Now our woodcutter is also our carpenter, and I think he is busy building beds right now. Yep, he is. So when he's done building those beds, he will uh, get up there and chop down some trees, and then our idle dwarves will run around picking those up. So our stairwell is done on the bottom half at least. Okay, there's the basic outline of our building. So we're going to build D for door. We don't have a door. Should have thought about that before I used them all on the uh, residential area. Mason, what are you building right now? He's building a door. So by the time we've done the roof, we should have a door. So we're going to build big C, D for downstairs. And then what we're going to have to do, go above that stairwell. We're going to go shift greater than to go up one. Put it there. And then... Yeah, we have more rough stone. We're going to build the rest of this out of direct blocks. And then I think the um, the roof, we're actually going to order construct it out of just rough stone. So, build, big C. We're going to build floor. And then we're just going to fill up this area, same as we did below with our uh, expansion keys. We're going to use just normal diorite. Again, we can't quite overlap the stairwell, so we have to kind of be a bit uh, funky with our positioning. Our dwarves should now get on with uh, building our roof. And by the time they're done that, we'll have our door. We already have our armor stand, so we're going to build A for armor stand. We're going to use the diorite ones. R for weapon rack. Again, we're going to use our diorite because our wood we're saving for our noble. His room should be getting smoothed out right about now. Yep, it's nearly done, so we'll get the basics of the military and the nobility done actually quite uh, quite quickly. But everyone's really busy right now, that's good. You don't want to have too many idlers. Too many idlers is the death of a fort, really. Kind of dramatic, but uh, it actually really a negative thing. Dwarves get unhappy when they don't work. And it's uh, quite inefficient, even if all you're doing with spare dwarves is throwing them all into the military and sending them out to raid other colonies. So same way we made the barracks, we're going to hover over each bedroom, press R to make it a bedroom, press enter, and then we're just going to leave it as a free bedroom. Once somebody gets tired, they will come and sleep and claim the rooms. We've saved one bed for our noble. There are mods like um, Masterwork stuff that can let you build beds out of uh, rock, but normally you can't do that. I did in a previous fortress have an artifact um, granite bed, which is just cool as hell. It actually had a different sprite in this um, tile set, so if we get another one, you might be able to see that. There we are, awesome. So we have not a super amount yet, but we have nine bedrooms. That's going to really alleviate the pressure on our barracks upstairs. Sorry, our dormitory. Can we build a door yet? Yes, we can. Diorite doors, we have to. And I think something else just is more a display of wealth and to annoy the elves. We're going to order two wooden doors for our nobleman's room. We're still finishing off the uh, the roof of our little barracks here. The reason I didn't fill out the um, end sections of these walls, if I were to put a floor on them, it would count as having something built on it. 
and we don't want that because later on we might decide to expand this building might you know take it up a notch or two and put like a, a sniper's nest on top of it if we get some uh, ranged military going so what we're gonna do hover over this same way we did with the bed except you'll see this time it says make barracks slash armory we're gonna fill out the room and then that's gonna be pretty much all that is for now but we're also gonna press M to create a military we're going to create a squad, we're going to give it the metal armor, we don't have any yet, but we will when we get to it. Now I think, who did we decide was going to be our military dwarf? I think, yep, we settled on Rakust. Where is Rakust? Okay, Rakust is a fishery worker. They're actually quite far down the list, which means they're not very good. That's fine, well, then we're going to press T on here to allow the armored conjurers which is the name assigned to that squad to train there, but we're not done. We then have to go to squads, press A to select the armored conjurers, and press T to make them train. That guy will now change to a recruit, more than likely. Oh no, militia commander, but his, um, his military role is not super good yet. He is not very proficient. But the reason we've got him training on his own for now is because later on when we get a full military, we... The way the military functions is he can lead demonstrations of all the skills he's learned. So, press V, we can hover over this guy, and right now we're on I for inventory. We can see that he is holding the copper spear and shield that we brought with us. Those are not good by any stretch of the imagination, but they're a lot better than the training equivalent we could make right now. We can make silver. Once we get into the migration wave, we'll probably get into metalworking and how that works. But the reason we press this V key is if we press G now, we can go into general. We're going to press B and M to take away all the other labors. You can see this guy has picked up the dabbling skill and everything. Dabbling is terrible. If that guy were to try and fight absolutely anything right now, he would most likely lose. By It's a pretty severe combat system. So even if that guy were to win a combat right now, he would not do well. Let's take a look at Rakust, shall we? Let's let's actually get to familiar ourselves, yeah, familiarize ourselves with Rakust. Within last week, he was disgusted, dwelling upon drinking nasty water. So really not happy about the water situation. I don't blame Rakust one bit. And we're going to deal with that by building a well. We did want to get that done last episode, but we just didn't quite get around to it. So how do you build wells? Well, they're actually quite simple. First, we want to make sure we have a clear area underneath. So this looks good here. We're going to press H for channel, and we are going to channel that zone there. In fact, no, we're going to go for that zone there. The reason we went by a 5x5 five five is we want a one, we basically want a center tile. We don't want it to be even. That is purely for aesthetic purposes. It would bug me if there was a central tile. Yeah, if there wasn't a central tile to put this well on. Thing is, they're probably drinking from the swamp water and not the nice clean river water. Where are our miners? What are you doing? Oh, they're out there bringing stuff home. That's fine. Yeah. Things are, so far, they're going somewhat relatively well. I've definitely had worse things, worse starts to forts. But I think it's time we built our nobleman's quarters because we're just about ready, so build with door. We're gonna use our fancy saguaro rib doors. I'm gonna throw them a bed back here. We have eight direct cabinets, we're gonna put two of those in there. We're gonna put his table and chair. Uh, I think we'll put them off to the side here. I will make this look fancier later, but for now we just don't really have that option. I'm going to throw down his chests. I think we'll put those behind his chair. No, 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 we're not going to do that. We're going to put those elsewhere. So as chests, we will put build H for chests, build F for cabinets, uh, build T for table, and build C for chair. So we're going to put the high wood chest and the pecan wood chest over there. Are the statues ready? They are. We're going to give them two statues as well. So, any dwarves who are currently ready will be doing this. And the, the reason we're doing this is because nobles of certain kinds, when we press N, have requirements. You'll see when we promote um, 
Zolban to be our bookkeeper that he will require certain things to do his job. One of them is an office. He will also require a dining room and some other cool stuff. Which is why we're putting all of this in place and why he's getting such a cool set of rooms. And generally speaking, I will fill these with uh, rubbish as we go along through the game. So we're going to assign this table to Zulban. We're going to assign this private study again to Zulban. And then we're going to assign this room to Zulban. Why have we done that? Well, that's because we're about to make Zulban our bookkeeper. And he's going to become our manager. That's going to allow us... Where is Zulban? There he is. So you can see requirements are met. What he requires is a meager office. What he has is quarters, a modest dining room, two chests and two cabinets. And he has yeah, he has a modest office as well. These are considered modest because the furniture in them is just not very good. But again, we can increase the, um, the coolness of those things later on by engraving the walls and what have you. So why have we done that? Well, that allows us to do something cool. We can now hover over workshops and we can press shift P for the workshop profile. This is something we couldn't do before. This will allow us to, um, like I say we wanted carpentry. We could tell this workshop that it's not allowed to do carpentry work. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. We can also um, press Q here for a new order. Instead of being limited to making just 10 things now, for instance, we'll, we'll just type out bed, construct bed, Number, we can either press 0 for that same repeat order that we had before, we just pressed R, or we can do something a bit cooler. We can order 40 beds. There we are. Now, just taking up one thing, you'll see it'll validate itself in just a moment. When the, the carpenter actually gets around to it, he will make 40 beds. The reason that's good is, say that we went to press honey from honeycomb here, you can see we don't actually have the honey yet. Say that we um, put that on repeat, but then ran out of honeycomb, it would just cancel the order. And if I didn't notice, we would then start to stockpile honey without using it, without putting it to its, its best use. If we do a perpetual order with the manager, he will then keep track of the fact that we wanted that done. And then when we get more honey, we'll restart that order for us. Ah, something I did forget to do. Let's give him his wooden armor standard weapon rack. So that's the basics of the nobles and of the military, which was much, much quicker than I expected this episode to be, so we can focus on the well. But our miners are currently storing things in stockpiles. I think everyone is just running around grabbing a bunch of wood now, who, whoever's free, and I'm okay with them doing that, to be honest. It means it gets done a bit quicker. Okay, we need two more hives, and then we're done with hives, pretty much, because so we'll have had... Uh, Plenty of them built. I'm hoping my beekeeper is actually doing his job. Who is my beekeeper? I know I have one. It is... Dismab. Let's go check on Dismab. Just follow him around for a little while, shall we? Dismab. Farmer. I like this command. It's just a little bit... A little bit uh, just cool to kind of follow a dwarf around, get a feel for what they actually do with their lives. One other thing I do really like about Dwarf Fortress is the way the, um, at least with the different tile sets, the way the tile sets actually change is just really kind of neat. Looks like we're already uh, running out of diorite too. What's our farmer doing now? Just no job, eh? Well, there are plenty of things for them to get on with, but I imagine every so often they just want to stop and chill out. Now, it is going to take them a long time to bring all of this wood in with the dwarves that we have. But that's just uh, part of the nature of dwarf orders. But it's kind of getting in the way of our progress now. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up to change these guys by their profession. We're going to find our miners. There we are. And what we're going to do with these guys, just quickly mark them by doing that. We're going to go over here, 
we're gonna take off furniture hauling for these guys. We're gonna take off um, wood hauling as well. Because those things will eat up a lot of their time and we kind of have more important things for them to be doing right now. For instance, digging our well. And uh, finishing off the bedroom areas. I'm going to probably add a few more beds in by now. Yep, we have a few more beds. Not many more doors. And you can see people have started to claim these bedrooms just of their own accord because the, oh, looks like our beast hunter and woodcrafter are married. That's good, that means they can produce children. Which, if you are doing any kind of like um, isolationist fort challenge, is pretty much the only way your fort's going to survive. Awesome, so we have our uh, first 12 residences up and running. How many dwarves do we have? Well, we technically we have 13, but we have 19 citizens, so there are still going to be a few of them sleeping in that barracks. And now, something else we are going to do, we're going to go to our bookkeeper here. I'm going to press S, and we're going to tell him highest precision. We want all our counts to be accurate. So if we go to him now, the manager, follow him. He's still storing things. Looks like he's hauling blocks now. He's now going to go down to his office and update the stockpile records. This is going to take him a while to do the first time, but once he has those counts accurate, when we press Z, we're going to know exactly how much of what we have. We have 30 portions of meat, 33 of fish, 185 of plant, no drinks, 90 seeds, and 485 other. That other will be eggs. Now it looks like somebody is not doing our brewing. So who do we have who currently has no job? That guy would be the recruit who is just, he's leveling up slowly. We have a stone worker. We have these two woodcutters here. What do they do? Brewing and cooking. We only have one guy to do brewing and cooking. So we're going to turn it on for this dude here. Serral, who doesn't appear to have any other jobs. So Serral should hopefully now start doing some brewing with those plants that we've been gathering because we uh, we need booze for dwarves to function in their daily lives and right now we have none and in fact so many people are just hauling random things that we might get a wave of chickens just from people not being able to get to the eggs in time but that's how easy it is to kind of fill up your labor in dwarf fortress Well, that's enough hives for our honey industry, so we're going to take our way down here, get to our craftsman. We are going to remove hives, just see to cancel the job. We don't need those anymore. We're going to designate H to channel again, and we're going to remove another layer from the well. once the uh, dwarves get around to that we will he is still updating our stockpile records that once he's got it updated he'll probably just spend a little bit of time each day in there but until then it's gonna be a while huh. so we have banner spears another dwarven village founded just near to us that's pretty cool means that the uh, Dwarven Empire is taking a keen interest in this area, which later on when we get into global shenanigans and sending out our armies to um, pillage enemy resources, just basically means our empire has a stronger hold in the area. We're less likely to get um, raided by the goblin civilization that we saw in episode one. We saw that they exist anyway. Okay, so we're gonna go down one more level designate H should just make sure yep nothing below that 
We're going to remove this final piece. We are also going to build C floor. We're going to go out by two. Just two. Out of diorite. That's going to give us access to the area that we want to build the well. Build shift C floor again. Two. Diorite. We're going to wait for those to be built. Then we're going to build the well in between them. before we finish off the um, the floor. There is a good reason for that. Um, when the miner that we send down there to kind of break the, the last bit, we don't want him to get uh, stuck. We want a nice clear path in and out, and then we'll finish off the floor. Don't see anyone constructing building right now, but that's fine. I'm sure they'll uh, get around to it. They have a lot on their plates right now with all of this wood. Which is quite a while away. How is our spear dwarf doing? He is still just a dabbling spear dwarf, but you see he has novice discipline. So Rakust, uh, furnace strong over there, will just continually level up over time. Thankfully, it seems like I really overestimated the danger in this area when we showed up to those uh, crocogators. But now that we have a military beginning to train, you know, we just we don't have to worry in the long term. It would be nice to have... Uh... Oh, we don't have any more barrels. Okay, so we made some booze. Made like 20-something drinks. But we ran out of barrels. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our workshop here. We're going to shift P for profile. Q for work orders. Start typing out barrel. Press enter. We're going to order 50 of those constructed as well. And we might actually have to build our second stockpile zone here pretty shortly because we have a lot of eggs. Looks like we've actually um, filled up our food storage with basically just eggs and fish. It's a brilliant diet, I recommend it. It's uh, in no way unhealthy to exclusively eat one type of food for basically your entire life. Aha, so we're gonna build, we're gonna go to well here, which I don't build these very often, so I can never remember the hotkey for it. Uh, where are we? Well, looks like it's L actually. We're gonna have this here out of diorite blocks, a pecan wood bucket, a pigtail rope, and a mechanism. That's why we didn't sell our ropes, we need those. Looks like someone's on the way to build the, the last part of that little um, overlook bridge there. Now it has meant that we've cut into the pasture for our animals a little bit, and we already don't have much in the way of grazing room up here. So we're going to have to be quite selective in what we take, and I think the yaks are pretty much going to be our animal of choice. Once the other animals grow up, the, um, what is that, like a water buffalo and a cow. So your water buffalo cow is now grown, so we're actually going to go down, press Z, and uh, we're going to slaughter that now. Stray yak cow can be butchered, so Z for animals, a Z to bring up this menu, B, enter, find your animal, press B to butcher it. The reason we've kept the yaks is because they can be sheared, milked, and their thread can be spun. Speaking of, how is our farmer's workshop doing? It has forgotten to do all of that, so again, we're going to shear, we're going to spin, we're going to milk, and we're going to make cheese. Now, next time I do that, I will set that as a perpetual order with the workshop command. I've forgotten this time. Saving. Spring has arrived. So we've made it an entire year, folks. We have made it through one entire year. It's been about two and a half hours of gameplay. And we've accomplished stuff. We, we've accomplished an okay amount. We're not dead yet. We've made it through our first year. A lot of forts that fail, fail either early on because people don't like their embark and they'll just kill the fort off, or they fail when invasions happen or melancholy strikes, there are a thousand and one ways your fortress can fail. 
Some of my favorites are the self-inflicted variety. Uh, why is this not inactive? It needs masonry. So we need our mason to get on that. Well, mason, what are you currently doing? Yeah, I'm going to un repeat those because after this we're going to order a certain amount of certain things and I think it is indeed time for our second mass storage pile we will get a little more specific with these later on and make them only for certain types of goods like just wood stockpiles or just food stockpiles just finished goods and furniture but for now while we have just such a, a crazy crazy time going on in our fortress we're just going to allow them to build anywhere out of anything well, it's going to be a while before the uh, the miners get round to that anyway looks like are we building that construction inactive what are you doing up there, then? What are you doing here? Who are you? You're the outpost liaison. Okay, that's, um... That's basically our, uh, our person from the, the homeland coming to tell us the do's and don'ts. We're now gonna go over to our hives here. We're not gonna gather any from this first row, because, again, this is our safety net. I don't know how you can check if there's an active hive in one of these. I mean, I see bees around, so we obviously have some active hives. None of these are ready to be split, though. So it's just going to be a while before we get onto that. Hopefully, yep, the miners have started. That's good. How's the mason doing? He is done. So hopefully we'll see our well pretty soon here. Construct bed. Damn, I thought, he was, I thought I was gonna see construct well there. Is there a way we can, uh... No, we can't, like... Oh, designed needs masonry, okay. Is that him there? I think it is. Okay, so... Now, oh! An elven caravan has arrived. Get away, you blaggards. We want nothing to do with those poncy elves. But what we do want to do is we want to go down a level, we want to press D, and we want to mine a channel out there. Now, we haven't done a regular channel, we've done a mine, and the reason we've done that is because the dwarf is going to come down, hit a hole in that wall, leave the surface unaffected, which, if we'd been clever, we might have only um, mined out just the spot for the well, and then not had to big the floor. You're always learning in this game. Well is dry. Yes, the, the well is currently dry, thank you. We need one of the miners to... Uh, Finish up with this down here before they can get the thing done. Let's see how are we doing actually. We only have five drinks left, so the dwarves have been drinking as dwarves are want to do. We should have had some barrels now, so we're gonna go brew drinks from plants. I check, have we got any honey? No, we don't. So any of the hives that have been split have currently been split to make other hives. Which that process does not destroy the hive, which is pretty cool. So, you can see we have an expedition leader. That will change to mayor as our uh, population increases. Looks like we have some more beds. Uh, we only still have the 12 rooms. But some of these rooms are ready for inhabitation. So, we're going to uh, jump on that while we've got chance. Get another three of those done. The fewer dwarves sharing that dormitory slash dining room, the better. How many cabinets do we have? Eleven. Nearly enough for everyone up here to have one. This is a super basic room for a dwarf. I have seen much, much more basic rooms than this, but basically to keep a dwarf happy in their room, they just need a bed and something to put their stuff in, either a chest or a cabinet or... In fact, those are, those are basically your options, a chest or a cabinet. Are we still grabbing in all of that uh, wood? We are. There's just so much. I didn't realize it would take us this long, but I guess dwarves have to walk all the way around the map to get to it. 
Now, we're not going to bother trading with these elves, because they hate when things are made of wood. And it's just a dwarf fortress tradition that you don't trade with elves, you kill them. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to kill those elves yet. They would murder us, because we have one novice spearman. And by novice, it basically means he doesn't know which way to point the spear. He could thrust it with all of his might into the belly of one of those elves and probably scratch them. This game does not pull its punches with combat. Okay, so, pile. C for custom, T for settings, and again, we're going to basically allow anything that is not refuse, corpses, and stone. We will build a stone stockpile pretty soon, actually, because it's really starting to affect... Oh, that's just unfortunate. Oh, well. It's technically a different stockpile in the middle of that one now, but we'll get over it. So there we are. They're able to uh, move some more stuff around now. We have three more rooms ready to make into bedrooms. Super cool. Good times for us. Ooh, our well is now built. And to stop people falling in, we're going to build a floor over the top of it. And we'll just use diorite again. Now again, I wasted floor space here that was used as grazing ground. Because I didn't think to just channel down once and then dig out some space for a well. And then I wouldn't have had to replace this all with diorite either. But that is a lesson learned for the future. Something about dangerous terrain. Ooh, we're out of plump, plump helmet spawn. That's, uh, that's not ideal. Now if we spoke to these elves, they would probably get annoyed that we have... Um, Same way we create the pasture, but we're going to press W for water zone. Yeah, if we were to, to speak to those elves, they would be annoyed at all the trees we've cut down. They would actually protest and say we can only cut down a certain amount of trees. And we're just, we're not about that tree-hugging lifestyle. In fact, we're so much not about that tree-hugging lifestyle that as soon as we get more migrants, we're going to burn some of this stuff to make charcoal. And then we're going to use the charcoal to uh, make ourselves some silver. Dwarves have a real, real big bunch of stuff to do right now. Looks like none of these hives are ready. I don't know how long it actually takes those to be ready. It could be that they've been ready once or twice, and the guy has simply already split them. Somebody has no job. Oh, it's the mason. That makes sense, actually. But he's just uh, moving things around. That's fine. So we're going to go up to workshop profile. going to go to new orders. We are going to want... Doors times 100. And then once we get another mason, we're going to have them make 100 cabinets. But we're going to have to save that for the uh, the next wave when we can get more. For now, we just want the doors and the beds. Oh, somebody has become a beekeeper, so we must actually be uh, keeping bees. Oh, speaking of migrants, there we are. Perfect timing. So for now, we're going to uh, see how many we got. So we'll bring up our Dwarf Therapist here. We're going to go back to Migration Wave. We're going to read. We got 27. Holy crap. Okay, so things just kind of dialed up to 11 for us. Because we went from like 19 Dwarves to 36. And it looks like quite a few of those are children. We got four... Five, six, seven, eight. Eight children. So we're up to our limit of ten out of a hundred. Okay. A lot of these guys... Okay, we won't rid of beekeeping with him because it conflicts when people uh, have the same things. We're going to remove all of these things for now. Not because they're not useful, but because I like to have a clean slate. Oh, we have a really good bone carver. We'll keep track of that. Yeah, I like to have a really clean slate. Soaping. Mm. Oh, 
bunch of mediocre woodcrafters, which aren't really very useful here. A lot, a lot of woodcrafters moving to a desert. Lie making. Okay, so we don't really have much of anything that we are super impressed with. We are going to get one presser. We'll probably add in another fisher, why not? Now, we are going to want a furnace operator. We're going to want two wood burners. And then we're going to want someone with... None of, like, we have no smiths right now, so we're going to want this guy here is going to become weaponsmithing and basically all types of blacksmithing. Get rid of that. So for now, we're going to leave the rest of the guys un... basically undone. We're not going to do anything with them. But we have a good reason for that. We have a lot of wood that needs hauling, a lot of stuff that needs doing. What we're going to do, we are going to need another mason, but we're going to start mining things. We have silver that we require. So we're going to order just that first bit mined. We're going to come up here. And just for now, we're going to build. We're going to go for furnaces. When I find the furnace thing again. There it is, it's E. And we're going to want some wood furnaces. We're going to want two of these. And then we are going to want to D for designate. And we're going to have to expand our crafting area again. And I think we're actually going to expand this down an area as well. With us having that um, storeroom going... Oh. With the storeroom having uh, spread down all of our stockpiles, we are going to want to spread with it. So, we will link all of these up. Same again down here. Now then, we have an okay amount of wood. But we don't have enough that we can just set our charcoal wood furnaces away and forget that they exist. That is something you can do if you live in like the rainforest type maps. It needs masonry. Well, we need a second mason anyway, so we're going to go into this second thing. Do any of you have any masonry skill? No, we have no other masons. Uvash, congratulations, you are a mason. So, I'm going to add a workshop order here. Workshop, orders, we are going to make shields. We're going to make nine of them, because we are going to finish off our military, hopefully this episode, by giving them wooden shields, which I think actually offer you the same protection as uh, the metal ones, unless fire is involved. I might be wrong about that. Now, it would be really nice to have um, <clears throat> some armor for my dwarves, but that is just not super likely to happen anytime soon, unless we make it out of leather, which is basically not even armor. Now you see, we still have zero idlers, which means that those um, those migrants are, it says they have no job, but if we read, I bet they're all hauling. Bunch of them are hauling, yeah. <clears throat> and then we have an absolute, like, basically a, a quarter of our fortress's children. How are we doing for... Um, Drinks. Okay, we're up to 96 alcohol. We have a bunch of uh, bunch of eggs still, thankfully. We're gonna go to our farmer. Farmer's workshop isn't doing too much right now. Shear animal. We'll put that on repeat again. Now let's see what animals did they bring with them. Uh, da -da -da. Stray water buffalo cow. I think that's about it. Yeah, I think that is. Wait. Where's our yak cow? Oh, I didn't... Did I slaughter my yak cow? I must have done, but I don't... Wait. No, 
she not? Yak ball. What a buffalo cow. I did, I slaughtered my yak cow. Okay, well, don't take lessons from me, folks. I am terrible at my job. So that really sucks, because that was a breeding pair of animals. Luckily, we have others. So it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it does suck. Now they're moving on. Build, workshop, mason. I don't want one of those. Build, workshop. And then we're going to want, uh, you know, we're actually going to build a boy's workshop. We're not going to use one of these super often, but we'll build one. We are going to want a blacksmith's forge. Out of diorite. And then we're going to want to go back to the main menu. We're going to press E for furnaces, and we are going to want a smelter. Those will all get around to being constructed as and when people have the availability. Probably once all of this wood has been brought in and people can stop uh, running across the map for it. But I'm going to allow them to continue to do that for now. Just because uh, we need it done. How are we looking down here? Okay. We can build some more rooms. Now then, if I wasn't such a um, nitpicker about making my dwarves have nice room, oh. oh. Well, this might very well be the end of our fortress, folks. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna show you something in the military that I didn't expect to have to use yet, which is alerts, burrows. We are going to add one now. Down in this area, we are going to press W. We're going to press Enter to start a burrow. I'm oh, sorry, A to add new burrow. Enter to start defining it. <clears throat> defining it. And it's just going to be this floor. This floor is burrow one. We're then going to press M for military. A for alerts. We're going to go across to burrow one with our navigation keys. Press Enter to activate it. That is burrow one activated. We are then going to get squad A, we're going to press M to move them. We're going to station our single military dwarf up here. We're going to unpause the game. Everyone should run inside. We're then going to, oh wow, is that it right there? Yes, it is. Get inside, get inside. Okay, we're going to hover over this door. We are going to lock it and keep it tightly locked. Hopefully we had no dwarves on that side of the map. Is he? He might very well be climbing over the walls right now. Everyone else is inside. Our military dwarf is in the pasture with the animals because if that... Okay, okay. Awesome. So... That guy just turned back into a dwarf. Our dwarf has weapons. Squad A, kill. So, actually, let's go through that a bit more easily. Squad is S. A to select, K to kill. You can then either hover over something with the rectangle. You can press L to bring up a list. Or you can box select things with R. We're going to try and kill that peasant. Because now that he is not a crazed animal monster, we might be able to kill him. Here's the thing. I'm going to delete this alert. If he had even wounded one of our dwarves, they would have become a were-beast themselves. Okay, so I think she has just, like, thrown herself in the river. Nope. Uh, she's... Oh, we're still fighting. Okay. So you can see here... That our militia commander, this is R for reports, and then the militia commander is just doing a bunch of stabbing of this peasant. And then it looks like stabbed the peasant in the head with his copper spear, tearing apart the muscle and arteries. Ten force twist the neck, tearing apart the skin. Death is all around us. The horror. So I think. And then, yeah, that, that was the, the death of them. Our. Our, um. Militia commander was not killed and was not hurt, 
So that's that's about as good as that situation could have gone. So now that we're out of kind of the panic zone, I'm just going to explain what actually happened there. We used a system called burrows. Now burrows allows you to define areas of your fortress as like safe harbors against certain things like wear attacks. Wear animals are excessively dangerous. If that thing had gotten through the walls, we would not have survived. With one dwarf with a copper spear and what level of training actually does he have? An adequate spear dwarf with no armor and just a shield would not have stood a chance at all. It was only the fact that we managed to hide behind our really bad walls that that guy did not just instantly decimate our fortress. Because if he'd gotten in, even if we'd killed him, he would have wounded people. And that's what's really dangerous about wear creatures is then you have 10 more wear creatures inside your fortress. They do work that way. And uh, yeah, he, he would have made a real bad time for us. So a little bit more of a uh, tutorial on the military than I expected to give you there. But hopefully that means, yes, we have built these. So we are going to add workshop profiles, queue for orders, make charcoal. I'm going to make 50. We're going to workshop orders, queue, make charcoal. We're going to make 50 here as well. That's going to use 100 logs and produce 100 pieces of charcoal. We're then going to go to our smelter. Once that's been started, and we're going to make a order 100 galena to be smelted. At least once the uh, once the first charcoal regis is being in our stockpile, we can do that anyway. What time is it? It is like 5:40. It is nearly lunchtime. I'm getting hungry. Actually, do we actually have... Speaking of, we need to mine out some more Galena. Now I'm just going to kind of throw this out as we get it. We were a little bit busy with, uh, you know, not dying a minute ago to deal with that. Build F. We don't actually have any more cabinets. We need to order a hundred of those too. added some more bedrooms. We are falling behind on that. We're going to have to make a bit more of a concerted effort on bedrooms here. In fact, I don't think we're even smoothing out the others. So, designate uh, designate smooth. Now, this other mason that is over here, we're actually going to add a list to him as well. Work orders Q door. I'm going to add a hundred doors to him. And then just because we're actually always running low on stone, I think we're actually just going to order this entire, well not the entire floor because it will cave in. We're just going to zone out a big bit here. That'll give us a bunch of stone and um, Galena to work with. Item inaccessible. I don't know what items are inaccessible. Did we lock any other doors? You know, those, the doors are open. Who is that, by the way? Oh, there's a monster slayer. Cool. So that guy will have been here hunting... Um, hunting that guy, probably. Looks like he didn't have anything on him either. He was just naked. So, now that we're done there, we're going to go to the smelter. Profiles... Add work orders. Q to add one. Uh, Galena ore. I'm going to smelt 50 of that. That will give the, the person with the furnace operating something to do. The reason we haven't assigned too many of the other guys is that we're going to bring nine more of them into the military. I think the shields, the shields have been done. The weapons aren't yet, but people will have brought, like, copper axes or things with them from their old professions if we had any, you know... Oh, some chicks have hatched. So, um, I'm going to stop the recording here, folks. Hopefully you didn't get all that background noise just now, but, um, I will see you in the next one.